Welcome to this video where we're brewing a quick beer in time for Christmas. It's the beginning of November and I've just turned 40. Uh, and wanted to bring a beer to the table at Christmas. So I'm going for a stout, an Irish dry stout kind of style. Um, I'll run through the malt bill. These are all the speciality malts which smell incredible. We've got Marisotta as well in two of these packs here. This is for a 40 litre brew. I'm going to be fermenting it all together but I might split batch some into secondary on some fresh chilies. We'll see. We'll see how we uh, how we feel with it. Just to make my chili and chocolate beer, uh, but I haven't tried it with um, such strong uh, aromatic malt before. So as usual, the recipe will be in the description below. But I'll run through each step and the recipe as we make the beer. Let's get mashing in. So I've just added my water additions. Um, and a bit of um, uh, baking powder as well. My water profile isn't too bad here in Wales for a, um, a stout recipe, but the target profile which I've gone for is the um, the, the, the Dublin uh, Irish uh, water profile. So I'm going to pour the first bag of Marisotta in now and then we'll uh, chuck all of the speciality malts in and then we'll follow up with the second band of uh, MO. So as that's doing its thing, just waiting for the temperature to come back up to 65 degrees and then I'll start the timer for one hour for the mash. I'll start prepping the sparge tank in the meantime and also weighing out the hops. So we're going for just East Kent Goldings for this one. Um, it's all about the malt, uh, this type of beer. So we're going for East Kent Goldings and we're going to chuck in some cacao nibs as well towards the end of the boil. And the yeast we're going to be using is the good old faithful Nottingham Ale Yeast. So it's a little bit too early for a beer. A little bit too early. But uh, yeah, I know what you're thinking, it is five o'clock somewhere, but yeah. So we've just topped up the sparge kettle. That's going to be, I'm going to have to refill it midway through the sparge, because I need to sparge with 27 litres. And this will only hold <clears throat> 18 comfortably. Let's weigh out the hops. Like I said, we're going for East Kent Goldings with this one. Nice traditional British hop. 
and some cocoa nibs, cacao nibs as well. So, first set of hoppage is going to be 80 grams at the start of the boil. This pack's already open. Bollocks, 90. Thought we nailed it. So you have 80 grams. Smells gorgeous. And as I'm measuring these, in case you're wondering, yes, this is uh, a t shirt from the Vogue Brewery, local brewery, Hotel Barry Fournier. Excellent merch, go and check out their site if you want. Luckily enough, this was a, a birthday gift. Not from Craig, mind you, but he has sorted, uh, sorted my family out with a very nice selection of beers for me, thankfully. So, yeah, cheers, Craig, if you're watching. So the next lot of hoppage is going to be 50 grams with 15 minutes before the end of the boil. Let's chuck the remainder of these in. Fifty grams. And then at the with five minutes left of the boil, we're gonna be chucking in thirty grams. Ooh. Where's the spoon gone? What sometimes happens with this, the um, side filters get blocked with smaller grist and it kind of stops the circulation and you get that squealing sound that you might have picked up on where it's just trying to draw wart from the bottom Spoon's gone. Anyway, 30 grams we need. The end of the boil. And there's 30. And just a smidge left for the for the very weakly hot. British Ale sometime soon. And then last but not least, some cacao nibs. With this, I'm not quite sure how much to put in. So, because this beer is 40 litres at 40, then I'm naturally going to be chucking in 40 grams of cacao nibs. I've no idea. And this, these are going to be going in five minutes before the end of the boil. And they absolutely smells incredible. Editions. I'll put that with the five minute edition as well so I don't forget as I normally do and what else 
the yeast can be ready to go. And we have 32 minutes left of the mash. It's looking good though. Look at that. Beautiful. So we just finished the mash. Time to take this out. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Heavy. Just clean these edges again. You can hear the difference already with the draining. This looks like engine oil. Looks amazing. Look at that. So once this level has dropped a bit, we'll get this into position. And then start the auto sparge. Nice and steady. I'll be back at the boil. So we've more or less arrived at our boiling temperature. You just see a starting and rolling boil in this section here. And just look at the colour of that. It's just like a like a freshly brewed black Americano coffee. Oh. oh smells awesome. Just give it a quick stir, make sure there's no hot spots. We'll soon find out if the temperature drops drops a bit. No, we're looking good. Gonna chuck in the first hop addition now. Which is our 80 grams of fuggles. Beautiful. And then there's no more to do until uh, 15 minutes before the end of the boil. So we are back in a very steamy brewery with 15 minutes left of the boil and last but one hot drop. This time of year I particularly struggle with extraction of steam in this brewery. but at least it's nice and warm in here. Oh, 
Right, 10 minutes till final drop. So here we are with the last hop drop and with our cacao nibs as well. Something I've just realized today, just by looking on my socials, it's actually International Stouts Day today, 2nd of November. Who knew? I didn't, that's for sure. And then we go with the cacao nibs. Oh, wow. So we'll let that do its thing for five minutes, flame out, and then start the transfer. So after a lot of faffing, I've finally, finally managed to get the GoPro working again. Yes, I've started on the beer. Doggo's joined me. Hey, boy, come here. Hi. Come on. Have your seat. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Um. I have rehydrated the yeast, we're just chilling down now, that's showing 24 degrees is coming out of the uh, chiller, which is ideal. I'll start the transfer into here now. Do you mind? You're crashing the audio, dude. You're crashing the audio. Do you want to go back out? Do you? Wait a minute. See ya. Um, so yeah, we are ready to transfer and then pitch the yeast. Ah, oh, bloody GoPros. So this is what the yeast currently looks like. Now that doesn't look like a healthy cake. I don't know what does. So the beer is ready to transfer. Mm -hmm. 23 degrees. And into the clean fermenter. Let's get it done. That off. Move this over to this side. Make sure the taps are closed. Make sure I'm not the only one who's done that. What I like to do is to lift this up with this little clip. I like to lift it up just to get a little bit of aeration in there. The way we'll go. Speed ahead. Beautiful. It's actually a bit too cold going in. So I'm going to slow the cold water down just a smidge. you get a shot for the gram. Okay. So, I'm going to chuck this yeast cake in there. This very happy uh, rehydrated yeast. on this is incredible. Wow. 
This is so promising, this beer. So, so, so promising. I'm going to whack the heat belt on this as well, just tonight, just to make sure that the yeast gets um, a warm environment for it to, just to multiply and have a very happy start. Then it should be able to monitor or maintain its own temperature and its own multiplication um, from tomorrow onwards. So it is a very cold shed and uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Sure it'll be good. Get some more height on this. Whoosh! And uh, yeah, if you see bits of drips on my t-shirt, I'm not dribbling, not yet. It's uh, literally like a, like a rainforest in here when the extractor fan doesn't keep up with the boil. And uh, yeah, there's uh, all sorts of raindrops falling everywhere. So unfortunately, after this clip, after I'm acting a fool, um, the GoPro didn't record my closing clip. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. But before I go, um, check out this crate that my brother built for me for my birthday. Um, absolutely brilliant. Upcycled from pallets. It can hold flipping plenty of beer. So yeah, he made it with one hand because he smashed the other arm and scapula in a rugby match. So yeah, well done mate. Thank you. See you in the next one. Yichadah.